good morning. Okay, for some time we have been talking about various levels of the structure of language. We began with talking about the structure of an individual speech sound, then we spoke about organization of speech sounds and now last week perhaps we began talking about word formation. In all languages of the world, in all natural languages, you have processes that allow formation of new words. Today and tomorrow and also perhaps uh, another class or so later, we will look at these processes and we will see if there is a grammar which constrains these word formation processes or is it that anything goes with anything. You might remember in the last class I said that it is difficult to define a word. Some people say meaningful combination of sounds which is again a very subjective thing or some people say minimal unit. Now, what is a minimal unit? So, we used a word called can you give me the new word that we used in the class last week? Anybody please? Morpheme. Do you remember? You can note. Okay? And we said we said that rather than talk about word which is again the same thing you know it comes this word comes from Greek okay, which means nearly the same thing look up a dictionary and look up the etymology of this word and you will find that it is more or less the same thing. So, in the end word is a notion we know, but we cannot define like many things in nature you know we do not have even now objective definition for lots of things lots of concepts we use otherwise. So, we said last week you might look up your notes or the slides I sent you that morpheme at least is one independent unit, one minimal unit. You cannot break the word down to further sub parts than a morpheme. We will further talk about it. Right? So, we will continue to talk about the concept of morpheme and word formation processes therefore, are studied in a sub part of linguistics in another section of linguistics which we know as morphology. Please write the study of word formation processes and we call it morphology. Like you know the study of organization of sounds, what do we call it? Please study of organization of speech sounds, phonology, uh, phonology production of speech sounds, phonetics. So, when we talk about word formation processes, we are talking about morphology. Right? So, we will continue talking about some word formation processes. We cannot go in great details in this intro introductory course, but we will have an overview of what are some of the important features, some of the important processes and constraints on word formations in natural languages. Are we together? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Everybody please? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Lovely. You know all new words can be done in only either of the two manners. There is no third way. Either you have word plus word a new word is equal to either a word plus word, there is already a word and you add another word. So, there is class and there is representative. So, you say class representative and it means Mahesh, it acquires a new meaning. In some other class it means Ashwin, in some other class it means Deepak, in some other class it means X or Y. Okay? So, you already have existing words, you have one word, you have another word, you put them together and you make a new word out of them. You have Raja, you have Kumar and you get Raj Kumar. 
okay, which means a particular kind of Kumar, a particular prince who lives at Buckingham Palace, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. Number one. Number two, the second possibility is you can have word plus, please note this word, please note this word affix, a little particle, smaller than word, but not much smaller. You cannot break it further. Okay? We will again, you know, in this class today, we will talk about the kinds of affix or kinds of affixation. But at the moment, I want you to understand that in all languages of the world, no matter whether you speak them in Nepal or you speak them in the United States of America, no matter where and which language, all languages have word formation processes by which they coin new words and new words come in only either of the two ways. Either they are word plus word or they are word plus affix. Look at some examples at the screen. Say for example, the first example history teacher. The word history is there, the teacher is there and you put them together and you get history teacher. Or you have word plus affix. So, person is there and there is an affix. Affix is you know, some part of the word. In this case, what is the affix? In this case, please kindly, B text please, kindly tell me what is the affix in this case? A L, all, you know this is the affix. So, you add it and you get personal or you could have the affix coming at the head of the word. Look at the next example, you have connect okay? and you want another word. You want to say okay, that this person is not connected. So, what do you do? You add an affix. What affix is here? D I S, this. So, you know you have affix plus word. It also shows that depending upon languages, affixes can come after the word, before the word, sometimes within the word. I will give you some examples later or you can sometimes have affix plus affix or a non-independent unit plus non-independent unit and you can get a word. Say for example, you have, a, you have personal where person can occur you have person plus al. So, you get personal, right. Sometimes you can have only affix plus affix. Say for example, you have per plus meet and it gets, it gives you new you word. You can have re plus meet, you can have sub plus meet you can have lots of other words and in all languages of the world, not just English, Sanskrit, Latin, German, French, many Indian languages like Malayalam are rich in this kind of derivation. You know, you get lots of words you can make in this manner. We will look at some of those examples a little later, but I want you to understand that all new words in all languages of the world are formed through these processes either they are word plus word or they are word plus affix. Sometimes it can be only affix plus affix. Some people call them root, some people call them stem. When you look up books on morphology, you will find some variation in terminology. Those variations are not meaningless, but you know I, I do not have time to go into great details of these variations here. But I want you to understand that it is like it is like nature in other aspects. We use existing resources to acquire new resources. It is a no invention, no, you know, nothing that we have made has been made out of the blue in that sense. We have had something, we have improvised, we have adapted, we have added, we have subtracted and we have got the new thing. Nature follows the same rule in this case as well. You can sometimes have, have you say uh, affix plus affix plus affix or you can have word plus affix. You know there can be permutations, there can be combinations. Imagine you have three stones A, B, C. How many combinations can you get quickly? You can have A, B, C then 
BTEX, please. You can have CVA, you can have BCA, and if repetition is allowed, you can have AABBC, or you can have AABC, or you can have ABBC. You know, possibilities exist. There are enormous possibilities. That is why, look at the beauty of nature, you know, and when you do some engineering in languages, you should be able to keep this in mind that all languages use limited resources, finite resources to generate infinite, non-limited output. But those non-limited outputs, can I have your attention please? Those non-limited outputs come out of these limited resources. In all languages of the world, new words are formed by, BTEX please complete the sentence, putting word plus word together or word plus affix together or sometimes affix plus affix together. Very simple, you know. There is no other, no other process. The second question is, are there constraints? Can we put anything anywhere? Can we put any two words in any manner we like? Can we put any two affixes in any manner we like? Are there variations? Are they of many different kinds? Okay. Let us look at some of them, them you know, how they come together. Okay. Uh, you can ignore, I will mail these slides to you. You can look at some of those definitions. What is a compound word? What is a phrase word? You know, word plus word sometimes is called compound word, when they behave like one. And word plus word is sometimes called a phrase, when they occupy a particular box in a sentence. Please look up the book or I will explain it to you uh, later. Okay? A phrase is a, a, is a group of words or a single word, which performs a syntactic function. It can be a subject, it can be an object, it can be a verb phrase, it can be a noun phrase, you know, then it becomes a phrase. Otherwise, you know, compound words are those words, like I have said, which can be more than one, but performing one function, making one meaning. When you say class representative, it means one thing. When you say prime minister, it means one thing. When you say boys hostel, it means one thing. When you say blood circulation, it means one thing. There may be two words, but they mean one particular thing. So, then we have the compound words and that is true of all languages. Look at these words. When you say film society, what kind of society is it? So, the first word is important, but it makes one word. You can talk about it as one word. You can say, I am going to club, you can say, I am going to film society. At IIT, we have, a, we have an OAT society. We have a film, film, film club or film society. Similarly, garbage can. What kind of can? Not the juice can, not the milk can, but garbage can. Here, the first word is important. Pen holder, writing table, table lamp. Okay. But there may be compounds where second word is important. Look at pickpocket okay, or cutthroat or redhead or daredevil or kill. You know, we have these things in nearly all languages of the world. I will give you some examples from Telugu. You can also help me. Or there may be occasions when both words are equally important. When you talk about deaf mute, when you talk about sarang sastra, what is more important? Sarang, yeah, I expected as much. Sastra is such a boring affair, yeah, even for us, okay? though that is the only thing that you can talk about in later life. Okay? But you know, so in the word formation, sometimes you may put two words together such that both words are equally important, okay? such as here. You know. Can you give me a, some parallels from Telugu, where two words are equally important? Like I can give you examples from my mother tongue. We can say dahi, dahi dood, okay? curry rice, jhor bhat, or you know, in, in lots of uh, places east of Varanasi, we say fish and rice or fish rice, mach bhat. Okay? Like you know, you say when you go to 
temples, you say Gauri uh, Shankar, um, Mahadev Parv. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. I would say Andhra Telangana. I will say Warangal Hyderabad. Right? I will say Tapti Godavari. I won't say Tapti Saryu because Saryu is obviously, you know, less important. Right? A father, son, mother, child, poet, translator, actor, director, you know. You can have lots of words which behave like one, but when you break them, you find that both are important. What am I talking about? I am trying to tell you that when two words come together, behave like one, though meaning wise, one part may be more important or another part may be more important or sometimes both parts may be equally important. But as far as word formation is concerned, this is it, this is how they go. Are there only two words come together? In English, we find three words come together, four words come together, shopping mall, car park or five words come together, hotel Fort Canning staff club or we find sometimes six, seven, you know, when my friends from biotech, biotechnology, chemical engineering departments write papers and ask us to sometimes read for our enlightenment and their correction, then we find they have six, seven words in one go behaving as one word, okay. Catalysis process or, you know, reverse osmosis, catalysis process lab, etcetera, etcetera, you know, we tell them please. Why do not you use sometimes off and in and to and that sort of, uh, you know, smaller things to help us. But language has no restriction. English language or like many other languages do not say you can have only one word or two words. We in India have entire verses, you know. How many of you remember that shloka in the praise of Durga, Aigiri Nandini? They are nothing but compounding of words, shanta karam bhujang shainam bandhanavam, you know, it goes on, kaushalya raman, you know, laksu pravatam when you go to Tirupati. Anybody from Tirupati here? Okay. I am told that all children in Tirupati learn it before they are born. Okay. So, all of these things, all of these things, can I have your attention? There are all of these things show that there is no upper limit on how many words you can have coming together. Even then, there is an order. We will look at that in later classes. You can, can you have only nouns together? Well, you can have noun plus noun. Look at examples in English and I will also ask you to add to one. So, please open your notebook. Okay? You can have noun plus noun, like you know you have tall booth you have security check, you have country house, country club, ring road. Can you give me another? Boys hostel, girls hostel, both nouns, give me some others. Guest house, okay. something else? A blackboard, lovely. Blackboard is not noun plus noun, it is black is adjective. Give me noun plus noun, please. Sorry? Come on, be, you see, there is no, it is not a shame making a mistake in the classroom. Classroom is the only place where you can make a mistake and yet grow. Do not make these mistakes outside, okay? Right, bathroom, yes. The least visited place in the hostel, yeah? Wrist watch, yes. Wrist watch, lovely. Come on, please. Okay, some more. Please write on, no, no. Everybody should have at least one your original, your own. Okay? Look at the adjective in noun and all, it is not that only English has it. No matter how highly we think of English, other languages also have these processes. Say for example, adjective in noun, you have low land, where low is adjective, land is land or high land, you know, in place of mountains, sometimes, you know, we talk mountains are pretty high, but when you talk of places, which are not so high and yet high. We talk of highlands, a blackbird, highway, red line buses, you know, green light. If you go to Delhi, they talk about red line, blue lines. If you go to London, then metros, 
trains are named like that, red line train, blue line train, green line train, God. They have an entire rainbow buried inside this city. Okay? Can you give me some example of adjective in noun? Somebody said some, you, you gave me some smart example, somebody gave me some blackboard. a blackboard. That is a, that's a good example of, you know. But blackboard has become generic now. Lot of people talk about this also as blackboard, when this is obviously green board. So, we call it green blackboard. Okay? Right. Sorry? A hot plate. A hot plate, yes. Very useful thing after actually, particularly for those in the hostels. Please come on, give me some example. Hard work, yes. One BTEC once told me, you know, somebody told a BTEC boy, hard work never kills anyone. And I remember some batches ago, a BTEC boy said, but why take the risk, sir? Okay. <laughs> okay, come on, please. Give me some example of, everybody please, at least one. Vikram, Anurag, where are you? Save my life, please. Sahitya, where are you? Okay, please SMS her. Okay, give me some example. Ah, lovely, that's, that's wonderful really. Sunny day, bright night. Okay, similarly we can have verb, verb compounds coming together, two verbs. Okay, a verb plus noun, search party, hangman, okay, crash land, rattlesnake, hovercraft, playboy. All of, all of these things are possible, they happen. Or you can have preposition plus noun, off color, uphill, okay, underage, overboard, bypass, by law. Look at, look at the versatility of languages, their resources, you know, how many prepositions you have. In every language of the world, you have limited number of prepositions. Nouns, pronouns, sorry, nouns, adjectives, adverbs may or may not be limited, but prepositions, articles, some other parts of language are always in limited number. But what you do is, you combine one with another and you get new words out of them. Of course, there are restrictions. Of course, there is a grammar. It is not without that, you know. If you want your computer to generate uh, this kind of vocabulary, you will have to give them the database, but you will also have to give them, give the computer uh, some constraints. We will talk about them if time permits. You can have adjective plus adjective regularly, you know. Some people have researched and found that whenever we talk of good things, like arts, architecture, music. We use lots of these words, light blue, royal blue, dark red, jet black, okay, milk white. You know, in India is considered one of the top racist countries and people are not looking only for good looking boys and girls. Is the girl fair? Yes. How fair? Milk white? I say well, milk splits in no time, you know. Have something which is stable, but people do talk about some of these things. Or vermilion red, or you know, lotus red, you know, we do talk about all kinds of things and we have words for them in Telugu. Can you think of, you know, uh, adjective plus adjective pertaining to colors in Telugu? Come on, yes. Tell me, speak louder. Ah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. Similarly, you can have noun plus adjective. Look at the example countrywide. Countrywide. Can you give me an example for, for this in Telugu and Sanskrit or any other language? Countrywide. A peacock blue. Here it is noun plus adjective. In Hindi, we call it Mayur Pankhi. In Maithili, we call it Mazur Pankhi in my mother tongue. In my mother tongue, we have all kinds of, you know, color prejudices, peacock color, parrot color, or some people can be crow color. Okay? 
okay. And sometimes it is, sometimes it is good to have black, which is beautiful, okay. So, bottle green, sea green, sky blue, jet black, blood red, okay. Sorry, world famous does not belong there. You can, you can leave it out. That is a mistake I have made. Look at verb plus adjective, rather limited. You know, I broke my head over it for about half an hour, could not find more than two examples, but English has some more. Yet, relatively speaking, these examples are limited. But you see, the theory, linguistic theory is not influenced by the actual number of occurrences. You may have only one, but the point here is it is possible. You can coin, you can make new words, you can and it is this capacity of making new words that is considered knowledge of language. The day you can impart this capacity to computers, you will have solved a huge puzzle, how we learn language and how we use them. So, you know you have preposition plus adjectives, off white, over explicit, verb plus verb, verb plus verb, do we have them in our languages? Can you give me one example of verb plus verb from our languages, either Hindi or Sanskrit or Marathi? Anybody please? No matter what, I will give you one mark out of my pocket. I will tell the dean please, they may not have done something like right brothers, but it was very close, yeah? Chalti chalti wo double wala, dwand wala ho jayega, Gauri Mahadev. Stir fry, they should make one verb. Chalti chalti will go for duplication. Chalti chalti, khate khate, gaate gaate, haste haste, maarte peette. Sir, O D will add. Haan, come again. O D will add. Haan, how would it translate into? Run and play. Ah, run and play. Ah, lovely. Okay, come on. Please give me something else. Okay, something more. <laughs> come on, please. An, a, anyone from Hindi? How many people know Hindi in this class? Can you give me some example from Hindi? Srinidhi? Khana peena to noun noun ho jayega. Khate peete ka sakte hai. Chale ga. Give me some. The king Kartabya Bimura is king Kartabya Kartabya is noun, Bimura is adjective. I am looking for verb plus verb, stir fry. Mere yaha Hindi mein bhi kaha sakte hai, hila dola kar. That's a verb. Hila dola kar, chala fira kar. Like the, you know, the point once again is, please think. And at the end semester examination, I am going to ask you to come up with examples from your mother tongue. And I know every mother tongue in India. So, please, okay, uh, try and think of some of these things. You know, this, this is, uh, the list is, you can have all kinds of combinations, noun, verb, like hand wash, hand weave, pressure cook, window shop. Valley view. Do you think we have similar examples in our languages? Do you think we have similar examples in our languages? If you think of words related to marriage, festival, you will get some words of this kind. Adjective and verb, you know, like deep fry, double talk, sweet talk, double coat dry clean okay clean sweep for those who you know play stakes gambles etc etc preposition plus verb underrate overestimate overeat overwork the the challenge is for us to think if we have similar things in our mother tongue Okay, and I am very confident you have. Okay. I am going to mail all of these slides to Mahesh. Please look at them and do spend about 10 to 15 minutes, definitely not longer than half an hour. Come up with your examples from 
your mother tongue and you will see you will find lots of new windows opening and you will see that these processes are by and large universal exact manifestation may change exact number of examples may differ some like you know english may have more because english has borrowed from everywhere we may not have as many because we haven't quote unquote borrowed uh, you know as freely but the processes are likely to be there in all languages i have taken some examples from my mother tongue you can look at the english meaning in english and you can have similar examples from telugu or tamil how many people speak tamil here okay please think of matching examples from tamil i am confident you have them marathi hindi hindi can you think of similar examples you know like you said det room what would you say in hindi devghar devta ka ghar or puja ghar no matter how you know american one american journal once are are we together yes, sir i wonder if you have heard, seen a journal called span have you seen a journal called span it is there in the central library okay so once a span conducted a survey of americans sorry indians in america and one of the not very startling revelations it came up with was that no matter how small their apartment they had a corner which they called puja room even if it was not a full room they had a puja room so what is puja room puja room is noun plus noun okay in you know what is kitchen in english in my mother tongue takes two nouns bhansa and ghar in bangla it takes two nouns ranna ghar how many does it take in telugu sahitya give me those words ma ah, correct i want you to start an evening proficiency class in telugu for all the boys in this class they are so deficient really okay they can only speak hostel jargon do you have do you have uh, such words in hostel jargon noun plus noun come on hazar pen will become adjective plus noun okay can you give me noun plus noun from the hostel jargon who is compiling the dictionary of hostel jargon for term paper are you no okay don't do that uh, there is already one if you go online iitm jargon one german research, we had a german research scholar here once a lady and she did a wonderful piece of work that is the best known part of iit in europe okay the jargon can you give me some noun plus noun from hostel jargon okay then pain okay then then you know it <laughs> right but look at the exam you know look at the gloss can i have your attention look at the gloss i have given in english i am sure you have parallels in your mother tongue say for example uh, asmashan ghat the funeral pyre what is the telugu word for that it is now 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 right okay dhobi ghat there is you know the best shopping area in singapore is known as dhobi ghat okay satyanarayan katha okay or you know chess board what is the telugu word for chess board that is now their satrangam is not adjective okay lots of them you know uh, i i wonder if you have if the, if you remember telugu word for house boat once upon a time telugu speaking people were trading community lots of big rivers going directly into the sea kakinada machli patnam visakhapatnam today they are all you know biggest ecological disasters you have words there okay 
these are noun plus noun. Okay. Bride's father, do you have a word for that? The most helpless person in India? Do you have a word for that in Telugu? Okay. Or how do you refer to the tamarind tree? Okay. A banyan tree, mango orchard, mango orchard. Anybody from a village here? Other than Rajesh and me? Yeah. Uh, what do you? How do you call? How do you refer to mango orchard? That is it. Okay. Or paddy field. Okay, you have one word for that. Our mother's mother's village. Ah, that's it. In my mother tongue, we call it Nani Gam, and it has a very idiomatic meaning. When you die, you go to Nani Gam. <laughs> okay. All of these things. You see here, duels. I'm I'm sure you can give me lots here. Both sides equally important. You know, in Sanskrit, they are called dwandva, samasa. Have you heard of anyone who did Sanskrit in school here? Okay. So, you may have heard of words called samasa, you know, compounding. There can be samasa where first word is important, there can be samasa where second word is important, there can be samasa which takes a new meaning. When you say murli dharan, you do not mean anyone with a murli. You mean Professor and head of my department, <laughs> a particular person, or you know, God up above the world so high. Okay. Similarly, you know, similarly you can have two words equally important. In my mother tongue, we have jhor bhat, roti dal, gur chini, jaggery, and sugar. Equally important. Do you have similar words in Telugu? Give me. Do you have a word for jaggery in Telugu? Bellam. And sugar? Chakkar. Do you ever use them together? No. Okay. Or chili and pickle? Chili and pickle? Karma, okay. Right? I think I will leave you early today. You know, I'm, you know, there is no point going through this entire list, you know. I am going to mail it to you. The point I have tried to make is the following, is the following. All words, can I have a minute please before you leave? All words, all new words actually are formed in this manner. I give it, I gave you a very quick tour of, you know, as we say all India tour. Either they are word plus word or there are word plus affix or there are affix plus word or there are affix plus affix. Tomorrow we will look at constraints on affixation, okay. how many different kinds of affixes are there and what constraints there are on these affixes. Can you tomorrow bring some examples of affixes like I said al, an, ian parallels in your mother tongue, not English. Bring some examples of these things from your mother tongue tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good day.